So when your job requires Mother Nature cooperating even the slightest amount, you're going to have some cancellations, some postponements, some weird things happen, and that's what we had here at Neely Henry Bassmaster Elite. I think this is the fifth or sixth. I think this is the sixth Bassmaster Elite tournament this year. So water came up on the north end of the lake. It went down on the south end of the lake because this river is so small, and there's one giant like huge horseshoe turn in the river and above that horseshoe the water is full and below it the water is low because they're dumping so much water out of this lake at the same time they're dumping it in but the lower end is low and the upper end is high so it's kind of like a bottleneck that the water cannot get through so we are putting in way up river we're going to drive down to where it's you know a little bit lower water because that's just where i've been catching them at or where i've been catching them at in practice remember there's three more feet of water on the stuff i was fishing but Gonna get out there today and try to catch us a bass or two. You know, the plan was for me to be leading with about 26 pounds after day one on Neely Henry, but day one got canceled. Now we got different conditions, so we gotta go catch them today. Things don't ever go as planned. So anything over nine pounds today, I'll be happy with because this is gonna be kind of an experimenting day where you gotta figure out kind of where they're sitting and what they're doing. So if you can just get that 9, 10 pound mark today on a super tough day like this, you'll be doing pretty good in this tournament. So I believe if we can get 9, 10 pounds a day, we'll be fine. If we catch anything like 12, 13, 14, we'll be sitting super good. So get out there, string together a couple of those two and a half, three pound bites and see what happens. The update is it's cold, it's windy, it's muddy, it's high, but we still gotta catch them with the best in the world. We're Somebody's gonna, catch them. gonna win. That's right. We pulled out like twice as many rods as I normally have on the deck. Normally I like to have like six, maybe eight rods on the deck just to cover every kind of different water column. Today we've got way too freaking many. I'll be tripping over them, putting them back in the rod locker about an hour in. So we got them out though, something pretty to look at. Did, yeah. I had to get off the trough. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> you ready for today? I'm ready for today. In what? Here. Oh, wow. He's the one over here talking about he don't like when people lie and he's the one lying over here. I'm telling the truth. If I get eight pounds a day, there'll be a revival on the water. Eight won't be that eight eight'll be okay. <laughs> Sixth Bassmaster Elite or seventh Bassmaster Elite on Neely Henry. We caught most of our fish, shallow cranking, fat papa, 55 square bill. So I'm gonna walk y'all through kind of what I was doing for the day because it wasn't the most interesting type of fishing. So I'm gonna kind of tell y'all what I was thinking, try to add a little bit to the video. So as you can see right here to my right, there's a really, really good current seam coming off of the bank. I just came from fishing grass for the first 15 or 20 minutes, I came out to this current seam, made about two casts with it with a chartreuse black, black, black back Spro Fat Papa 55 square bill, and I instantly caught, you know, a really, really nice two and a quarter pound spotted bass, and that really keyed me into the pattern that I had found on day three of practice after the water had fallen on the mid lake to this lower end, I had found that I could catch some spotted bass cranking in these current breaks and only making two casts to a current break and catching a you know two plus pound spotted bass showed me that they're still there for that day and i could probably be able to run that so i went and ran grass for a couple hours and trying to catch a big large mouth trying to make it work because i did shake off some really nice fish in practice and catch some nice fish and you can see right here i stopped on this bridge caught me a keeper large mouth or two and then really decided that i wanted to make sure that i got me a limit had a solid tournament and was going to stay on the main river and crank and also mix in some of the gambling trying to catch a big large mouth or two but we really at this point after i you can see right here hooked up with my third keeper which is another just 12 inch large mouth as soon as i caught this fish it really made me want to commit to the main river cranking but i still had you know a couple different spots i would have to jet off to and stuff like that so 
This is one of the areas that I really thought had the potential to produce, produce a big fish. There was a lot of shallow wood cover on some like super flat, not even 45 degree banks. And I was bouncing that fat pop of 55 square bill off of that super flat cover with current running over it, isolated grass patches and stuff like that. Caught me a nice keeper, but never got a big bite doing that, which is one of the ways I really thought I could catch a big fish. So you can see right here, I'm just running a ton of new water in the tournament. I love doing that. That's one of my, I feel very comfortable on the water whenever I'm, you know, running around fishing the way that I want to fish, especially whenever I'm running new water. So I pulled up right here to this big boulder rock and actually there's a boulder and a good. boat ramp right here. Just threw out, caught me like a 12 and a half inch spotted bass. That was my limit fish for the day. I had spent three hours that morning fishing for largemouth and about an hour on the main river and I had already caught a limit, you know, in just an hour of fishing the main river. So it really told me that, you know, that was going to be the consistent deal. But I just, for whatever reason, I genuinely never felt like I could catch a big bag shallow cranking on the main river. I felt like it was going to top out at the 12, 13 pound mark. And on day one, I really thought that, so, you know, there was going to be a lot of 13, 14, 15 pound bags. So I really kept trying to keep it honest and catch, you know, a little bit better grade fish out of some of these major creeks because it is early May and the fish had to be just done spawning. You can see right there I lost a nice one. It ended up not would have helped me at the end of the day, but right there I did lose, you know, a pound and a half fish or whatever. This is whenever I moved over into Canoe Creek right here. The shad were spawning in this area the best of anywhere that I've ever seen, uh, that I had seen this week, not anywhere that I've ever seen. I've seen some dang crazy good shad spawns, but I really went in here late in the day because I felt like I had found some off the wall places where I could get some better quality bites. And at this point in the day, I had not been able to do that. So I went into Canoe Creek just to grind around, fish the wind blown stuff, which is going to prolong that shad spawn bite. Ended up getting a couple of nice bites. So can't complain there. The thing that I like about the shad spawn, especially you can run it all day whenever it really starts happening. If you get a little bit of wind and you know kind of where they set up at, you, you can kind of run it all day and find those fish that are sitting up. So you can see right there, caught me a large mouth. This fish actually coiled up by probably two ounces, which at the time I was very, very happy to have him. I measured and made sure he was a keeper and then I threw back that little bitty tiny 12 inch spotted bass which I had caught for my fifth fish and then right after that large mouth I instantly caught another two and a quarter two and a half pound spot right on that same place and ended up culling out the large mouth that I had just caught in the last clip pulled out here to the main river and this was actually a phantom bite right here this is a large mouth that's close to a two pounder probably is a two pounder i threw that fat pop of 55 square bill up right on the edge of a log jam with a blown in grass mat blown up to the edge of the of the dock and i wound that crankbait down beside that grass bed and i caught that nice fish and it was kind of a phantom bite because i went and ran that for a long time cranking the log jams and the, and the stuff and flipping it and everything, never could get another bite. That's just kind of how that day felt. Every time I would run something, it was really just about covering water. I never could get on a pattern. So this right here is the same type of a deal that I had found in practice. I was cranking the main river, current breaks and eddies, trying to catch those spotted bass. The Coosa River is notorious. If the water gets stained up and the current really turns on, you can always catch some main river spotted bass and usually can catch some big ones this was actually a welcome sight this was about a three pound spotted bass that i caught in the last hour of the day very very fun one i actually caught this one on the on a different crankbait a six foot diving spro little john a little bit tighter wobble but i cranked down this this same stretch a few times that day so i wanted to go down it with a different crankbait and i ended up picking up a really really nice spotted bass to cull out a very small large mouth that I had in the box and that's pretty much the last fish that I caught that gave us 11 pounds and 12 ounces so ended up having a good day what I found on day three of practice ended up holding up but I still spent like four hours of this day trying to catch those two and a half plus pound largemouth and I just never could get it going but cannot complain had a good day so Wanted to give y'all a little bit of a talk through, let y'all enjoy the rest of this fish catch and the rest of this video. Appreciate y'all watching.
size of the drop down. They're like, I don't know. Maybe two. I guess, dude, she told me I was going to be a 60 feet at 10 pounds. I was like, I don't know. That's what I was going to be. 10 pounds? Yeah, she said, she said on Bass Track, I got 9 pounds. She said, I'm a 65th on Bass Track. I was like, dude, they, they fish ain't here like that. They just don't fish. I was like, what? Well, you kind of deserved it. I did deserve nice it. Nice work. Oh, for sure. Because <laughs> he got me at the last one. I actually wanted to tell that story, but I felt like it might look bad that we caught the same fish like 12 times, you know? I only caught it once. Yeah, well, I'm, caught sure, it three times. I'm sure somebody else had to catch it. Oh, they had to. No rewards for you. No. For being in 65th. We're going to be stressing. Stressing for this one. So Problem. Tell me, how, tell me how the day was. The day was okay. I mean, I, I knew what to do the entire day, and I wasted like four hours trying to catch big largemouth because I got some really big bites in practice, and I was trying to find where they relocated, and I spent like four hours doing that, and finally I was like, quit being a dummy and just go fish where you know the fish. there's some fish, and I went and... Just kept grinding up till I got a decent, very decent bag, but never could get a big bite. I spent like four hours this morning trying to figure out how to do that. Never could figure it out, so need to get one more. I had three bites in that day, buddy. I didn't set the hook on it. All right. You can zoom with the lens if it's not close enough. Bass. I saw that. Good morning. How was today? Today? Yeah. Well, we got a limit, so that wasn't too bad. Heck yeah. All right. Do it again tomorrow. We'll do it. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. 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 Can I see what you got? I mean, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't like going to win nothing. The road in Opelika, Alabama. Come on out, Kyle Welcher. All right, Kyle. Another angler who was talked about coming into this event. Highly picked on Bassmaster Fantasy, and it looks like you had a good start to your day number one here. Let's see how good it is. Five fish in the bag. Check in 11 pounds, 12 ounces. Going to put you in 19th place right now. So Kyle Welcher inside that top 20 with 11-12 at the moment. So there you go. You're in range going into your day number two, Kyle. Yeah, you know, this kind of lake right here is all about how big your smallest fish is. So today I had a pretty decent bag for not getting any big bites. So like what makes these tournaments is you don't weigh in any one pounders and then you get a couple of big bites. So today we checked off not weighing in any little ones. Tomorrow we just got to put together a couple of big ones and move on up a little bit more. So consistency is going to be the key this week. I'm hoping we can get out there tomorrow and figure out something to add to that. Good start and hopefully you can build off of that tomorrow. We will see you in the morning. What's up? What you gotta do tomorrow? Um, somehow catch something in the teens. It doesn't matter if it's 13 or 18 or 19. We just gotta catch something in the teens and move up, get closer to that top 10. Because gotta be fishing on the final day if we're gonna win one of these suckers. Setting pretty decent, though. What am I at? 20th? Like 19th? Nope. Yep. Not that much weight behind. If I can catch 13 twice, I'll close it up. <laughs> 